Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got crypto tips back on because we want to discuss all things Cardano staking, yield farming, NFTs. We've got a lot to get through today because I know you guys have been asking about it a lot, especially the Cardano staking. So I thought I'd bring on the experts to talk about Cardano staking. Crypto tips, Heidi and Toby, thanks again for joining me on the channel. How are you? Yeah, thanks for having us, Jason. Yeah, thanks, Jace. Good, to, good to hear from you. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. Been catching any big waves lately? Or is it yes. starting to die out? Yes. Yes, yeah, it's, it's always big here. Like the waves are usually about. That's what she said. 10 meters. Yeah. That's, she, she's always saying something, isn't she? Yeah, I mean, come on. She talks a lot. She talks a lot. <laughs> yeah. All right. Always so, big. Yeah, it's been pretty good. good. It's almost good as high week. as Cardano. <laughs> that's true that's huge monster 70 yeah. footers all right in yeah, portugal pretty much i'll just mention to the guys if they don't remember we had both of you on about a month ago to talk about crypto taxes through the us and um, traveling overseas or moving overseas repatriating to reduce your taxes so if you guys are interested in learning more about your taxes check out that video on the channel too all right, so let's start with Cardano staking. Do you want to just take us through like a bit of a beginner's guide, where to find it, how to start, just the easy things, and then we'll get onto the, the more, I guess, difficult things, if there are difficult things when it comes to Cardano staking? Yeah, um, I think, well, in my opinion, if you want to learn about something, the best thing to do is go to the source. So you can go to Cardano's uh, official website, and they actually have a really helpful FAQ section obviously answering the most frequently asked questions about staking, how it works, uh, the security of it, what you're expected to earn and things like this. Um, and really, I think what, the, what I'm actually coming across in a more general aspect of staking and DeFi and lending is that the word staking is kind of being the uh, general term for it when really it's not. There, like You can't technically stake Bitcoin, for example, but a lot of people are asking how to do that. Um, what's really important to understand is these platforms like Cardano are proof of stake. Um, they were designed specifically to allow people to earn an income by basically storing their coins in a specific kind of way that benefits the network. Um, and with Bitcoin, it wasn't designed like that. So basically, if you want to earn more of, of, of a passive income with Bitcoin, in addition to just seeing a price depreciation, what you're doing with Bitcoin is you're actually lending it. And that requires often a third party that we're seeing on exchanges basically, or platforms like BlockFi or Celsius. And these platforms all require you basically to give that platform complete ownership of your coins. The beauty of proof of stake and staking coins like Cardano is that you can earn a passive income and still keep 100% ownership over your coins. And there's actually really easy ways to do this in a secure fashion as well. Um, whenever you can implement the use of a hardware wallet, I think is a great uh, layer of security that you can add to this process. But so for Cardano, there's uh, three wallets that I know of that you can stake from. Uh, Ada Lite is actually a website wallet, um, similar to kind of like my Ether wallet, if you're familiar with that. Also, they have the Euroi, which is a web browser extension. It works Euro. on Chrome and Firefox, I believe, maybe Brave, uh, but to my understanding, for sure, it's on Chrome and Firefox. So for me, I would opt to use Firefox over those if, if that's my choice, uh, just for privacy and security reasons. Um, and I did a video actually talking a little bit about MetaMask and some of the downfalls and maybe some privacy issues that not, not a lot of people are aware of that comes with MetaMask. And if you're going to compare that to Euroi, there's actually um, not this like explicit uh, privacy pro policy where they're saying like, you know, we're going to be collecting your data. Um, so in my opinion, it's better than MetaMask. Who knows how it's going to develop in the future. Um, but again, Euroi and Ada Light, you can match those with a hardware wallet like Ledger or Trezor, which is great. Um, and also, of course, there's a Daedalus wallet, which is an application wallet that you run uh, locally on your computer. And again, you can match that with a hardware wallet as well. Um, most of the, like what you can expect to get from staking Cardano is like five, six, 7%. A lot of it has to do with which staking pool you choose. Um, uh, what's really cool about Cardano staking as well is uh, 
it's automatically compounding your interest basically. So the rewards mm-hmm. that you get from staking are automatically added back into your staking balance. You don't have to log in and claim it or mess with a bunch of different wallets. Uh, it's pretty easy that way. So, so I, I guess the, the big difference between like staking and dividends, because most people are probably used to dividends. That's kind of what I yeah. grew up with. Um, so you, 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 with dividends, you're paid out, you know, usually quarterly, um, and then you have to have your coins on, or your, your, um, your stocks on a certain brokerage firm, which is a third party. And so you don't actually own those, you know, uh, that, that stock. I'm so used to saying tokens and stuff now, <laughs> but now, you know, with, uh, with staking, I mean, you can get paid out daily some on, on some coins. Yeah. You can get paid out within like five days for for Cardano, and uh, it goes into your wallet and that you uh, you control. And mm-hmm. so that's kind of like the new wave of the future. I, I don't, I can't see really anybody like like even accepting dividends anymore, like the way they do it, just because I think the, the lack of trust now with what happened with like mm-hmm. GameStop and stuff. I do, I just. I, I see the entire world going on to this. Yeah. You, you also, really are too, a crypto like, maximalist. <laughs> I definitely. Yeah, Ty- Toby is a crypto it. maximalist. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I, it's like, I hate the <laughs> traditional finance system. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> but also like talking about Cardano on a more general scale, you know, it was launched as yet another one of those Ethereum killers, uh, which you know, what we're seeing now, um, Ethereum is, in my opinion, suffering from the extremely high transaction fees that people are being slapped with. And it's a really big turnoff. So, you know, people are searching out these other options of coins that can do something similar, or at least are cheaper to transact with. And so like, you know, you had Tron and EOS as well. Um, both of those, what differentiates those from Cardano is that these are called delegated proof of stake uh, blockchains, they use that type of consensus mechanism. The difference between Cardano and these other Ethereum killers um, is their consensus Tron and EOS. mechanism yeah. called dele- yeah, Tron and, and um, EOS, EOS, EOS yeah. they have a delegated proof of stake. And that to me is, I mean, literally it, it puts a direct limit on who um, can work to validate the network. And actually you have to be an elected person to do so. Um, so not everyone can run a node. If you want to, you have to be voted in. And when you're looking at, you know, this whole crypto ecosystem and the strength is coming from its decentralization on how robust it can be, that to me is immediately, obviously a bottleneck and can definitely be a security issue. In fact, we've seen that play out in, in EOS um, a couple of years ago as well. Um, and Polkadot actually is the same. It's called nominated proof of stake, but it's the same concept. And what how Cardano is different from that is that it's purely proof of stake. And on top of that, they have, they're using this incentive model that actually incentivizes more decentralization. So if you're choosing a staking pool to delegate your coins to on Cardano, if you're looking for a way to earn a passive income with your ADA is to um, choose a staking pool. One, one thing you need to pay attention to is called the saturation level. And what that is, is as basically as a, a staking pool has a lot of uh, uh, coins attributed to it, basically the more powerful it gets, the rewards actually start diminishing. So in that way, it's encouraging people to create more and more staking nodes. And it's actually kind of, you know, for once, um, encouraging the little guy to, to come out and you can be pretty profitable. Decentralizes it a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. It's instead of like, you know, uh, there's other proof of stake platforms where like generally how proof of stake works is that the more coins that you have as a node, as, as a staking node, the higher the likelihood you are to be elected to or, or selected to mine a block and get those uh, block rewards rather than proof of work where your computers are actively competing with each other and the best computer runs out, uh, wins out with proof of stake. It's based on how much stake you have. Um, so Cardano works like that in a way, but also, um, they, they're incentivizing decentralization in that, you know, if it gets too powerful or any one node has too much money, then, you know, they're going to start to cut back. So I think that's really interesting. And it's like actually yeah. completely opposite of what delegated 
proof of stake is doing as well. So in a time where Ethereum, again, is like hurting from all this transaction fees, we'll see how relevant these Ethereum killers are. But I think Cardano has got a really interesting take on um, the solution they're trying to offer. That's the first time I've heard of that part of the staking, which makes mm. sense. It seems like it's definitely very uh, able to decentralize and continue on and on and on, which is a pretty cool feature. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm really excited to see how that develops because you yeah. know, it's still really new. And you know, when things really get start, uh, begin being built on Cardano as well, we'll see, you know, cause it's all just an experiment, right? <laughs> so exactly. we'll see how it goes. But I think that they got a, a good foundation for it. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, uh, Toby, do you want anything else to that? Because I wanted to just dive into all, of, like that was a lot of information for someone new. I know a lot okay. of my viewers I, love buying Cardano. As far as like, okay, so I hear like ETH killer, like this is going to be an ETH killer or whatever. I just, I, I stay far away from that stuff because I've heard, gosh, since 2015, oh, this thing's going to kill ETH. Oh, this yeah. thing's going to kill ETH. Yeah. Like, no, like you want a competitive marketplace. That's what it, the whole point of this is, you know? And so like, I hear a lot of like maximal or like maximalist for, Cardano or maximalist for the, this this chain or whatever. It's just like, hey, you know what? The free market's going to choose what they like and, you know, let the best man win. It's fine. Yeah. Also, like crypto isn't a zero sum game, right? It's not like one coin is going to win them all. In my opinion, any blockchain that is really trying to be interoperable with other blockchains, it is so in sync with this whole concept of this space being open source free information, people can learn from each other's mistakes and, and, you know, take from your strengths and shut off your weaknesses. Um, so that's why, like, we're also pretty bullish on like platforms like dot Ethereum. A lot of faith in <laughs> Gavin Woods. Anyways, I think he's done a great job and you know, yeah. this dot and Kusama. It's and incredible that how much stuff is being built on dot. Now there's all yeah. those extra projects, poker starter, poker. What was another one I was looking at? Some sort of poker insurance, poker, this poker, that. <laughs> I think even Reef, the the old the old Reef as Reef, well. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know whether that's a scam or not, but it's uh, it's getting a lot of traction. So just yeah, talking sweet. about Cardano staking, I guess for new guys, it seems like all right. I, I I've got the tokens now. I need to go and set up a wallet. We've got Yori. Is that what it's called? Yori. Yeah. Yori. Yeah. Yori. And then I also yeah. need something to work with Yori Wallet. So using maybe Firefox. Or I could get Ada Light and have my ledger and then connect the two so that it's like the most secure and I'm earning interest. If I figured out all of like how to do that, then I have to stake, but I have to choose the right pool, which isn't so saturated. So is there like, is there an easier way to do all of this? Actually, yeah, there's, um, there first is? of all. Wow. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you go to adalight.io and you, that's the wallet that you've chosen to use, um, yep. if you go to the staking option, they actually automatically fill in like the most profitable staking pool that they run. Okay. Um, so it's not necessarily from the whole, all of the nodes that are on, that are participating for Cardano, but it's like the of the ones that they do, it's most profitable. Also with Yuri or Yuri, I don't remember how to pronounce uh, that one. Um, Y-O-I-R-O-I or something like that. Yeah, yeah they wanted to, to make it as easy as possible to, to say. <laughs> they really show you, you know, with color coding and uh, pretty much they, they explain the different aspects of a staking pool. And pretty much you can say like, okay, these are our top 10 most suggested ones based on saturation level, based on the fixed fee or commissions that these staking pools are taking based on, you know, the average uh, yeah. return <clears throat> ROI that you're going to get from it. So those are like, you know, the things you want to pay attention to is, you know, the tax, basically the commission. Um, and you know, how profitable is that staking node? Are they functioning 24 hours a day, which they should be at 100% uptime because they have to be functioning to be able to be selected. So, um, yeah, it's, all those things to balance out, you know, between um, well, we choosing did, the best one. We we have like we are involved with um, <clears throat> seed pools. Yeah. So um, that's pool. one that we've kind of helped. Oh, that's build, the name so. of one of them. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. There's a few, and and so I I actually did recently a tutorial on how to choose a profitable staking pool for Cardano, and I I, I spoke I used that one as the example of looking at the different aspects yeah. of a right. of a staking pool. All right. So, so people yeah, then have to go through and change 
pools as the rewards move up and down. It's probably only going to be a percent or two here and there. Yeah. And it's, I think it's also a good idea while you're at it, while you're researching, just pick like five <laughs> that, you know, you can switch to. Um, also what's important to know about Cardano is that if you stake your coins, you can withdraw them and send them right away. You don't have to like unstake them and wait for a couple of weeks, which is the case with a few of these other different coins. Um, yeah. So yeah. that's really easy. Also, what's really that's important nice. to understand with staking is that when you're, it's not like you're sending the staking pool, your coins, like the staking pool can't do anything with your coins. Basically all right. you're doing is assigning the value of your coins towards that uh, so pool. So then they can use <clears throat> your value to count towards it. They don't have the authority to spend your coins or do anything with it. So they're really still free for you to, to move around. And then also, yeah. also keep in mind that when you do um, stake your coins, that uh, the, once, you know, the, um, the epoch, which is like the, the amount of time which that you uh, get a block. Mm -hmm. um, once that comes out, you might not see your coins for about two weeks. So don't freak yeah. out. Um, it, you know, when I first started this, I'm like, oh, wait a second. It's been like two and a half weeks. I haven't, yeah. I haven't gotten anything. And all of a sudden, boom, boom, you see like a lot of uh, coins in your, in your wallet. Yeah. And it's just, it takes time. So yeah, like right. two weeks is generally. And then also if you ever change your stop? staking pool, yeah, that's yeah, start. Yeah, just to start. start. That's to start Afterwards, receiving rewards. Yeah, and then fine. the payout uh, for like every five days after that. Yeah. All right. So you get paid, let's say like 5%. Um, and that 5% is uh, not paid out every five days, but it's distributed over um, the year within every five days. So let's say we got a thousand coins just for round numbers. Uh, it's at 5% per yeah. annum. Uh, that's going to be 50 coins. And yep. say you just, re you, you might receive, say on average, about one a week. You'll receive one extra eight or a week for the thousand you have staking. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. compound. So, and as it's, if you're choosing for it to compound, then the number of coins you'll be getting will grow over time as well. Yeah. So, the first week you get a thousand. So, you'll have a thousand and one. You'll have, you have one okay. coin. So, you have a thousand and one. Next week, it'll be 5% per annum on the thousand and one. Exactly. And then you're cool. not, that's not even counting like what the dollar amount is going up yeah. so for instance we started at you know what, what three cents it, when it, it was three cents. Yeah, <laughs> i'm pretty sure you guys got in big <laughs> yeah. at three yeah yeah so you know the dollar amount's gone crazy so yeah and it's also for people who are looking for a passive income or a way to earn something that they can use to like dollar cost average into a position like staking is a really easy way to do so um, if you're just going to be holding that coin anyway I think there's a lot of coins that people don't realize that they can stake and, and earn that kind of income from. Because I've always just been of the view just to throw it onto Binance and just earn the rewards because they're so much cheaper because I'm more looking at trading them, going in and out and then trying to get more income that way. But I guess for the guys who just want to go all in on ADA or one of these other coins, then it's easy. To, it's better off to go through this process of getting your wallet, looking after your safety, understanding the staking, and then you kind of set up for you know, for life. I guess a lot of people are trying to go yeah. down that path. I mean, like the thing about like Binance is like that they're the reason why they're doing this is is to make it super easy and like really high um percentage uh, API is be just because they want to be able to vote. They want to steer the market their way. I mean it, it's like yeah that's that's the risk actually with those delegated proof of stake coins is that all there this incentivization to do it on a centralized exchange you're actually giving that exchange voting power and mm -hmm. we've seen it play out with tron network and steam actually uh they they i don't think all the 2012 2021 people would not know about steam yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Wait, no, a lot of stuff that happened. But, but, yeah. but one thing, I mean, obviously if you're trading in something, that's why you're going to have your coins on the exchange anyway. It makes sense to do it that way. It's super easy. But if you're looking for, you know, absolutely the best income specifically from staking, it might not necessarily be a centralized exchange because they tend to take higher commissions and they might not be the most efficient at running um, that staking node. Um, I've actually heard that about Tezos, at least uh, on Binance. So um, something to look out for. Okay. So yeah, they're the options. The easier route would, to, would be to look up the Cardano website. Yeah. yeah. Also, adapools.org is a good um, website. Adapools.org. To... Okay. Yeah. To look so at that's... all the different staking pools. 
So essentially people know how to buy ADA now. They don't, I've got plenty of links down below for Binance, SwiftX, all that sort of stuff. Now yeah. they've got their ADA. Now they want to stake. They go and set it up with a wallet and uh, well, an ADA Lite is a web wallet and the ledger is the hardware wallet so that they can talk mm -hmm. to each other. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And once they've got Basically, that- The hardware wallet is like a, a 2FA for that. The two-factor yeah. authentication. Okay, yeah. yeah, it's like the safety. Really good 2FA. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we go to the website, which is adapools.org or, or the Cardano website to look up which one has the best saturation level. Mm -hmm. And then we can stake through there. So which, do we have to go to a website to stake this? Like where do we, where do we stake it? No, you can go right within that wallet interface of if it's oh, Adalite, of Adalite. If, it's yep. Roy, if it's Daedalus, yeah. they have like a staking option. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to fund the wallet and then you're going to choose the wallet that has the coins in it to use that funds to stake. Um, and you can choose it, how basically however many, however many coins are in that wallet is what will be staked. And then yeah. all you need to do is find the pool ID, yeah. which is like the, the address of that specific staking pool. Just copy, paste it in, make sure it's actually what you're copying and pasting in. You have the tutorials on your channel. So rather than us trying to figure it out here, yeah. you got the full tutorial on your channel. Yeah. And I also go over, you know, like the security concerns of those different wallets of specifically Adalite and Euroi as well, just what to be aware of and best practices for those two. If you know, you're going to be storing it yourself, yourself, you might as well do it as best you can. So excellent. Oh, that's good. At least they can go over there. So if people want crypto tips links down below, I'll leave your crypto tips thing down there. So check it out. Full tutorials over there for that. Um, we might talk about yield farming on another video because I know you've got more tutorials on that, but let's just do a quick run through of NFTs. And then we'll, yeah, we'll wrap up for, sure. for, for today. NFTs, what do we know? What do we do? How do we make money? What is I it? think they're a really cool development in crypto. And I've actually, I think they've been a long time coming. I mean, Crypto Kitties came out in 2017, <laughs> which was like, no one knew what that was going to turn into. But um, actually like an early implementation of blockchain that the general world was getting excited about was this whole supply chain thing of the ensuring maybe the authenticity of the product or you know the uh the supply chain of, of how products are going from where to where so it's like you know bringing honesty to industries that often didn't have that backbone um and so that's what nfts kind of are they're called non-fungible tokens so unlike bitcoin where, or like a lot of these other fungible tokens, uh, where one coin is equal to another, not like one, say one specific Bitcoin isn't suddenly going to be much more uh, valuable than another mm -hmm. Bitcoin. You can switch them out very easily. Non-fungible tokens means that they are assigned to a very specific thing. They are not interchangeable, um, like trading cards or pieces of art or, you know, things like this. Real estate. So, yeah. Yeah. And actually what's interesting is like, that's a, a really cool way to bring, you know, ownership of real world things onto a blockchain, but that's, I, we're not there yet. There's actually very few um, implement implementations of like real world, hard asset things represented by NFTs. Um, but that, that would be great when that comes around. And I know that it will, <laughs> um, Yeah. but also it's like, it's like this whole digital world, right? Like the internet Napster came out and suddenly um, music artists are like not earning the money that they would if it was just on selling CDs or whatever or albums. It, it it was cool for the end user where you can get all this free music or whatever, but it wasn't really conducive for the person creating it. And I think that, you know, it's kind of suffered in a way, this whole digital space of if you have a photo online, if you're a photographer, you know, you have to be careful what you publish online because then it's out there forever. And nice. what yeah. NFTs do... <laughs> What, I, what NFTs do is really cool. They actually um, guarantee ownership over a specific item and they guarantee the, the fact that it's an original. It hasn't been duplicated or faked or, or anything. Um, and what's also really cool is that as the creator of an NFT, you can, you can choose, you can design it however you want basically, <clears throat> but you can choose to be paid each time that specific NFT has been traded. So as it, if it appreciates in price or if it's traded, you can earn what, between like 2% to 10% of each 
time it's uh, traded. Yeah, yeah. So that's like residual income. So it's kind of like you're the tax man, <laughs> except it's something that you actually created and exactly. it's like, you know, doing good for people. And you're taking out the middleman as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's that's huge. You create a song and you just put on 0.1% and you know, it goes wild. Yeah. Dude. It's huge money. There's a lot of stuff coming for NFTs, but at the moment it's really hypey and yes. you could get burnt very badly. But I think we should go into this in more detail in a future video when we get a little for bit more. Sure we know which ones and this, that, you know, like we can yeah. start to put it all together, see if we can make some cash from it. But right now it's got a real use case in the world, but it's just like, Hey, it's still experiment, very experimental. Everyone's so so that's going to bring the whole world into this essentially. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's going to open up a lot of people. They're going to start piecing together how crypto is really disrupting industries and really reinventing how money can work for us and mm -hmm. like how you can get a passive income in so many different ways. And I keep, whenever I, I think about that concept, I'm always brought back to Andreas Antonopoulos. He had a great um, talk where he talked about the concept of streaming money. And that's what it's gonna be like with crypto and it's borderless, it's digital, it's immutable, it's disruptive. And that's, yeah, we're gonna be streaming money just like how we, how you guys are streaming this interview. You didn't have to download it. You just clicked on a link. Um, just by interacting online, you're going to be earning money. And that's why Bill Gates really hates freeing. it so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think a lot of my viewers aren't a fan of Bill Gates either. So that's you know, it's not a bad thing here, but I reckon that's a good place to end up because it gives us something else to talk about for the next one. We've already gone for like half an hour here. I think it's, oh, we've got sorry. so much to go. We, we have so much to I talk was like, about. I, I don't know if I can talk that long. Crap. Okay. Yeah, no, we, we, we definitely can. So I'll mention to the guys, um, look, we got into just the beginnings of NFTs. We haven't really figured out a, a really great way to make money from them, but they look like they have a huge purpose here. And it's just a matter of figuring that one out, which is what we, we plan to do. Cardano Staking, thank you very much for filling us in, you know, A to Z on that. I'll call it Z for you guys and for my daughter <laughs> <laughs> or Z for yeah. us here. You got to get that joke. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> Um, anyway, A, A to Z on the Cardano. And if you guys want to know more about the staking, head over to Crypto Tips. I'll put a link in the description for your channel. Thank you very much, guys. If you yeah. liked it, Thanks, leave us know, hit the like button, subscribe, yeah. all that stuff. Uh, yeah, we'll catch you over and we'll do a video on your channel right now. So if you guys want to check out some more technical analysis, head on over and you can see me over there. So thanks once again. Yeah. See Cheers, you, mate. guys. No worries. See you, mate. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao.